This is calculator question number 18 from the March 2019 SAT. College Board is asking us to interpret a survey, and this is for many people the hardest question on the SAT because we have not taken a class on interpreting surveys, which is typically covered in this depth only in AP statistics in most school systems, unless you've had Statistics 101 at your local college or community college or AP statistics, this is something you may need to learn on, on your own. I have a playlist with a number of similar questions, none of which is close enough of this to be as helpful as I would like. So I would encourage you to track down all the interpreting surveys questions that College Board has used before your actual SAT. Don't go too far ahead if you're going to use other available tests to evaluate how ready you are, but make sure that before you go in for the SAT, you've answered all of these and looked at why the correct answer is correct and the different points on this question that College Board tests. Normally I just deal with the one question, but because of this topic, I'm going to, for one of the rare times in my videos, teach, which I think is more a job for Khan Academy. They have a different mission than I have in my vision for my videos, but I'm going to address the general question. We have a sample selected at random. And these students are surveyed about morning announcements, 32. And they're selected at random, fourth grade students from a certain school. So the population we drew from was fourth grade students at that school, and we selected a random sample. In surveys, they often talk about a random sample as being the best way of sampling, and we're going to treat it as if that is a good option, and look at these choices. Which of the following is the largest population to which the results of the survey can be applied? If you can only apply the results of the survey to the 40 students who are actually surveyed, it doesn't make sense why you would take a random sample. It would be more helpful to know whether the students in a particular class like the announcements than whether 40 random students spread over perhaps different classrooms in the school like the announcements. So this purpose doesn't make sense for the large number of surveys we hear about if you can not apply them to anyone who is not surveyed. So I'm going to reject that choice. I'm going to take an analogy. I got some grapes today and one question I have is are these grapes sweet or are they sour, bitter, mushy in some way not worth eating? So if I select five grapes at random from that bunch and sample them, and they all taste good, most of us would say, oh, I got a good bunch of grapes. Take them home, share them with friends, or hide them away and eat them when no one else will ask to share them. But either way, we'd say these five that I selected at random are good. The whole bunch is probably mostly good. And that's generalizing beyond the sample to the group that the sample was taken from. So generalizing from the 40 fourth graders who were sampled to all fourth graders is like generalizing from five good grapes to a whole bunch that are presumably good grapes. So this answer makes sense, and in fact it is correct, because our sample was drawn from fourth graders at a certain school, so we can generalize to the population from which our sample was drawn, fourth graders at that school. Choice C, all students at the school that's like concluding, these were good grapes, all fruit at the store is good. Even tasting a sample of grapes, a very large sample, does not allow you to conclude that their strawberries are also good in the store. And even seeing that 32 out of 40 fourth graders like the morning announcements or think they're helpful, does not tell you whether the first graders and second graders think the morning announcements are helpful. You can't generalize beyond the population that your random sample was drawn from, so choice C is not correct. And choice D, all fourth graders, grade students in the county in which the school is located. So we're not generalizing from grapes to strawberries, but we're generalizing from grapes in my grocery store to grapes in another store. I don't know how fresh the grapes are in another store. I can't conclude that because my grapes were good at my grocery store, that the other grocery store also has good grapes. I can't conclude that because fourth grade students at my school like the morning announcements, 
the fourth grade students in other schools that have an entirely different set of announcements, perhaps delivered in a completely different way, you can't conclude that about 32 out of 40, about that fraction, 80%, think the announcements are helpful at other schools. You can only generalize the results of a survey to the population from which the survey was drawn and generally only if the sample can be considered representative, for example, if the sample is drawn at random, is considered a reliable way of most likely getting a representative sample. With grapes, if I look at this bunch and there's a large number of grapes there and I choose the best looking ones instead of the brownish mushy ones, I can't say, oh, the ones I selected taste good, so the brownish mushy ones also taste good. I have to be selecting grapes at random if I'm going to generalize and say all these grapes are good. And with students, you have to be selecting at random if you want to generalize to all fourth grade students in this school. Another issue is, suppose you want to know how enthusiastic students are about cafeteria lunch. If you say, I know an easy way, let's select the four, first 40 students in the lunch line, it's quite likely that the first 40 to get there are more enthusiastic about the school lunch. And it's quite likely that some students who never get in that line because they brought their own lunch may have less enthusiasm for the school lunch. And the reason they're bringing their own lunch is they don't rate school lunch as highly. So your sample must be representative of the population you're generalizing to. If you want to know how people feel about school lunch and you select 40 people at random from those who eat the school lunch, you can generalize to those who eat the school lunch. If you select 40 people, the first 40 in line, you cannot generalize because there's no reason to believe that the first 40 are representative of everyone. They could very well be there first because they're more enthusiastic. If you want to know how all students, including those who don't eat school lunch, feel about the school lunch, you can't just survey those who get the school lunch. You have to find a way of randomly selecting students whether or not they eat the lunch. So generalizing from a survey sample experiment to the a larger population, you can only generalize to the group from which the sample was drawn. And College Board will test that. If you want to know more about this, I would suggest Khan Academy or a good AP statistics book. I'm not going to endorse any particular author. I don't think that's appropriate in my videos. But if you talk to classmates, friends, your local AP statistics teacher, or your local community college or college, you may be able to find a good statistics book, or you may be able to find recommendations on which ones to avoid. There are also AP Stat prep books from some of the major publishers that put out books of that type. And if you ask around, you may be able to find which ones are particularly useful or particularly accessible. And look into the sections on surveys and the section on interpreting data from a table and proportions, particularly proportions from a two-way table, is heavily tested. So we have the surveys, sampling, and two-way tables. And that's a lot more teaching than I prefer to do, but given the content and the fact that a large number of students taking the SAT have never been exposed to that content, I wanted to go that far. If you want more detail, con or some, a textbook may be the right place to go. And come back soon for my next math video. With math, there's always more.